Now, I tell you when I'm going to believe in a ball or over flat. I'm not being funny here, but I tell you, there is so much on the net here, and one can get very confused. But let's look at a few real basic facts. Something very basic, and that's the narrative. The narrative was started by Copernicus. And it's been built on over the years, and the distance of the sun has grown to 93 million, a bit like Pinocchio's nose. From 3 at Copernicus to 93. I find that highly interesting to start with. Showing that they never keep things at the same level, because they had to keep extending the lie to fit, uh, make things fit. Well, the problem I have, as said, is when are they going to show me a picture of this globe Earth, seeing they've taken millions and millions of taxpayers' dollars, should I say billions, and given us a fraudulent moon mission. We can see they never went to the moon. It's easy to see. It's just so fraudulent. The computer thinks it. The inhumanity of the small space and the fact that rockets are highly fraudulent anyway. So add all that together, we know they didn't go to the moon. And then it turns out, hey, they didn't have a space shuttle either. And lo and behold, they haven't got a space station. So I mean, there's one, two, three, strike, strike, strike. They can't do anything in space. Then we turn up that their spy planes are all bogus as well. Looks like Concord has got a lot of shiftiness going on. High altitude is shifty. The guy who leapt out of space and all those space balloons, shifty, shifty, shifty. So some of them purport to show a uh, bit of a curve. We can see that's done with a piece of black paper put over a picture at a lower altitude. And sometimes a CGI at a lower altitude. Because clouds never move. You know the whole story if you've watched enough videos on the problems with this so-called ball. So the day they can give me a real picture for the billions of dollars spent, I might believe them. But isn't it funny how that DeGrasse Tyson said the Earth was pear-shaped, and yet NASA's 72 picture has it actually wider at the poles. I saw a guy measuring it, it was slightly wider, that image, at the poles. It's very circular. It's certainly not pear-shaped. Flatter in the, I mean, wider in the southern hemisphere, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson. What a laugh that man is. Same as Michu Cuckoo, the Cuckoo Man, who couldn't answer the guy's questions about the moon conspiracy. But I tell you, the whole interview was contrived to start with anyway. Anything you're nearly listening to, they pitch both sides of the argument so they control it where they want it to go. They keep it in strange uh, terms and complicated issues come in and they really try and wiggle their way through. Look at that picture of India down there. It just looks like their Mercuria projection. But as they're saying, the Earth's more like the Peter's projection. So that doesn't add up. Isn't it convenient that they have uh, their, the Mercurio as their, their preferred model on their 72 thing? Because that's what we're used to. I do notice there how close India actually is to the North Pole. I'm not liking that bit at all. But yes, yeah, so for those people who are worried about the Earth being flat, all you've got to think of is Copernicus through to NASA. They're the people who told us, and they didn't tell us very well, did they? So until they start not lying, until they show us some truth, which we know they never will because they can't lie straight in bed, then we'll believe anything they say or something they say because we'll see it's real. But up to this point, they haven't given us any reality. It's only in their books and the little figures and all the little diagrams and all the things in the world that try and say it's a globe. When I walk outside, it looks flat to me. So at that stage, I'm just taking what I can see with my eyes. And when they show me a picture of a real ball earth taken by a camera from one of their satellites, then I may believe them. Ha ha ha, let's see if that ever happens.